Hi, my name is Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com and uh, we're going to have a look at today an alternative to the very popular, very famous and very good Light Sphere. Uh, this is a product for those of you that don't know by a very talented bloke called Gary Fong and he invented this thing that sits on top of your speed light and looks a little bit like a round lampshade and in fact it was the lampshade that gave him the inspiration. Basically what he um, thought was or what he um, kind of considered was that if you've got a lamp like a round kind of table lamp that you might get with a round lampshade on it and you put that in a room then the people in the room uh, don't have harsh shadows on them because what's happening is that the the light itself it's kind of some of it's coming through the shade but some of it because it's translucent it gets bounced around inside before it comes out so it goes around nice and evenly uh, in 360 degrees that then scatters the light in a nice diffuse and soft way throughout the room it bounces off the ceiling and you know there are no it's not directional light and so therefore it's much more pleasing to look at so he invented a thing um, that sits on top of the the flashlight normally I think you can you can have them that way or that way but basically the idea is that you uh, you stick the thing on on top of the flash like that and it's round and what happens is that as the light comes out at that kind of angle from the top of the speed light it hits the the round uh, sides of the of the light sphere bounces around inside it because it's it's translucent uh, which means that it's kind of halfway between transparent and opaque it's kind of it's kind of foggy to look through so it means that some of it is going straight through but being scattered and some of it's being bounced around inside before it finally escapes and so it creates a very soft light it goes out in all directions rather than just in the one single hard direction that you'd normally get with the flash beam and uh, creates this very soft light uh, so brilliant idea um, but the thing that I think for a lot of photographers um, and I include myself in this uh, you know it, you, money is really important when you're starting off in uh, in photography because there are so many things that are pressures upon the uh, the resources that you have so uh, any time that you can save a little bit of money that is always good and the light sphere as great a product it is in the UK retails for around about 50 pounds now, although that might not seem like a great amount compared to perhaps, you know, the thousands you might spend on your camera or lenses, every little helps. And when you consider if you're an amateur or if you're a professional that's just starting out or you're, uh, you know, you're, wherever you are, frankly, in your career and, you know, money is important, uh, you know, that £50, pounds, uh, you know, it could be um, it could be put towards marketing your business. It could be put towards um, another piece of maybe more essential equipment that you don't yet have. Uh, and so if you're in that position and you want to find a way of uh, getting the same type of, of results, I wanted to find a way of doing that. And I worked it out. So, uh, drum roll, please. And this is the world premiere of the ice cream pot. So it might not look very exciting, uh, but I'll, um, I'll, I'll explain why it's good and we'll see a couple of examples of how it works. This stuff is actually, um, and it's not just ice cream pots, lots of stuff, shampoo containers, sports drinking bottles, uh, like pick and mix nuts, I mean all kinds of stuff come in packaging which is made out of this translucent plastic. It's not completely white, that would be no good, it wouldn't let enough light through and you'd lose a lot of your flash power. Uh, it's not completely clear, that would be no good either because the light wouldn't, it wouldn't bounce around enough inside and so what would come out wouldn't throw through the, the plastic and be diffuse, it would be a little more specular light anyway, uh, but most of it would just go straight up, not, it wouldn't come out in this nice even smooth uh, 360 degree spread that you get with the light sphere and, and what you get with this. Um, so this is what you're looking for, um, it's, a, it's a translucent material. This particular ice cream tub had what I thought when I saw it on the shelves in the shop, um, like a kind of card, like card label that you could just rip off. It turned out it was like printed on, so it's quite hard to get off. I actually had to sand it off in the end. Um, but that actually worked out to my favour because it, it roughened up the surface a little bit, and that again made it a little bit uh, more diffuse for the light to come out. So um, the whole thing, you know, is is, is pretty cool. Uh, now all I did. Put a hole in the bottom that was roughly the same shape as the the the, the flash bottom you see how it's kind of got that shape to it um that's you know that's going to fit through there um you want it to be ever so slightly smaller than the top part of the flash because you don't want the thing falling off you want it to be a fairly tight fit when it's on there um you could do a lot neater job than that if you were doing it yourself um i kind of attacked it like a like a mad knifeman with a kitchen knife and made a really crappy job but I get excited by these things and I just wanted to sort of, you know, get it on and just see if the principle worked. Mark two, I might do a like a proper marking out job. I might even measure that and draw it and do it with a craft knife and uh, and, and make it look nicer. Uh, but nevertheless, it works and I shall show you it now. Um, so what you do, you put the flash in this way up. Um, so 
you put the, the bottom of the flash in through the top of the pot, if that makes sense, um, and kind of shove it through there, like that. And you want the the flash head to be about a centimetre from the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, there. You, you want the flash head to be about a centimetre from the bottom of the uh, the top, no more. You don't want it all the way up there, like that, because if you imagine like the flash, is not, the flash head, the bit where the light's going to come out, um, is now the light's only going to be splaying out from this top part, and so only that top lip bit's really going to get lit. All that stuff is just black plastic down there, so it's not really going to do any good. So make sure that you have it set up so that just the bottom bit of the, the flash head is um, is in the bottom, and then when the light comes out, it's going to splay out, bounce all this stuff, and then go around. So uh, that really is it. I mean, you know, uh, I'm not going to milk it. Um, that that is it. It's an ice cream tub with a hole cut in the bottom of it. Uh, so if we switch this flash on here and uh, attach it to the camera, I will show you how it works. So we'll put that onto there like that. And I'm going to put this into continuous burst just so that hopefully some of the bursts will pick up in, in, in camera. Because obviously this camera is set to 50th of a second or whatever it is on, on the uh, uh, you know, recording this. So quite often flash bursts don't come out on, uh, on video. So hopefully if I put this on continuous you should be able to see you know, at least some of the, the, the pops as it, as it comes out. Uh, but basically, uh, what you've got, see, any direction that's coming from, the light is, it looks the same in all directions. You see that? See that? So what's happening is the light is coming out of the top there, and also, because the top is, is also empty, see, uh, on there, uh, what you've got is uh, light coming directly up to the top there, which is good for bouncing off the off the ceiling as well. So light is going to come out and go down onto your subject, but it's also going to come onto all of these walls, uh, bounce back onto the subject, and it creates a lovely soft light, just the way that the light sphere in fact does. Um, so and that's why they're so good. Um, now, have a look at these pictures up on the screen now. The first one that you can see, um, and both these pictures are of my dad, by the way. Um, so uh, if you have a look at the first one, this was done just with the uh, the flash pointing directly at him. So um, I've simply done the, the classic thing which looks terrible in flashes and kind of nearly everybody does, which is, you know, I've pointed the flash at him and I've gone boom. Uh, and that's created this very harsh look. And you can see how the the colour is pretty harsh. Um, it, it's almost got like a bluey tone to it. All the shadows are pretty harsh in his face. It's not a flattering look. Uh, this image was taken with my ice cream pot light sphere thing. Uh, and as you can see, for uh, something which was really pretty rough looking, the image has just improved beyond all recognition. The light is now so soft, it's coming from all directions, it's, it's wrapping around him nicely, it's a lot more flattering, uh, it just, it, it makes all the difference in the world. And it looks like it's been shot with a really expensive modifier, or could even look like there's maybe another window, uh, you know, that he's getting light from that's in front of him, as well as that backlight coming in from the window behind. Um, and, and so the whole thing just is just a million miles different. So um, I mentioned that the original light sphere costs about fifty pounds in the UK um, and in America um, it, it's about the same. I mean, although dollars are worth you know whatever it is less than than, than pounds, you know things tend to be more expensive in the UK. So I guess it's probably fifty or sixty bucks if you wanted to buy it in the states. You know, fifty quid over here in the UK. What did my ice cream cost me? Well, it cost me three quid, three pounds for that. Um, and I got ice cream out of it as well, and I've just eaten that with some lovely chocolate cake, and it was brilliant. Uh, so I think that's a bargain and well worth having a go at if you um, fancy getting a cheap, good light modifier. Is it good for all occasions? Well, I don't know. If you were going to um, do a very expensive uh, sort of portrait shoot with somebody and they were paying you a lot of money to turn up and do a really professional job, uh, would you turn up with that on the end of your camera? Probably not. Um, you know, but if you're at the point when you're earning good money to do shoots, then uh, you probably don't need to. Um, this is maybe for the amateurs or the people that are just starting out, and maybe they're not being paid quite so much to do that. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're an amateur or if you're shooting for your local newspaper or you know local school newspaper or whatever it is, um, or you're just shooting pictures at your um, at your friend's wedding, you know you're not you're not paid to do it, you, you, you know, or a party or whatever where you're not really paid, you're just a guest, you're turning up. Um, yeah, or if you've got you know clients that are, are just you know just dig uh, you know homemade crazy stuff um, and you know wouldn't be uh, put off by that. Uh, sort of slightly lo-fi looking piece of kit that you're carrying around with you, then these are very, very effective, if not beautiful. So that's it, end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe in the bottom up at the top there and leave your comments below. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much. Cheers.